I was 14 years old, a bit of a quiet and shy kid, had no money lying around, so when Xenoblade X released on the Wii U, I had no way of actually playing it. Not being able to ask my parents to buy a relatively expensive console with a game on top of it. I had exams after all, and I had my Nintendo DS to console me. So basically I was just looking at the trailers and hoping that one day I could experience this incredible world after coming from the high of Xenoblade 1, which was my favorite video game of all time on the Wii. Fast forward a couple of years, after I got myself a Nintendo Switch with my own money, I've gotten around to Xenoblade 2, which I fell in love with. But even as the credits rolled, X was still in the back of my mind. I couldn't play it after all those years. Was I gonna buy a secondhand Wii U just for one game, or emulate it on a PC, which I didn't even have one to begin with, and even if I had, it wasn't stable, plagued with various graphical glitches. See, basically I found myself in a bind. After all, as much as I enjoyed exploring the world of all the rest, I have to be honest here. It was nowhere near as big and expensive as Xenoblade 1's World of Bionis. Especially, the late game felt a bit corridorish, which is something I also felt around Chapter 4 onwards in Xenoblade 3. For me, both games suffered from the same problem. As much as I loved exploration in these games, especially Future Redeemed impressing me big time here, I felt like the world design and scale of Xenoblade 1 was always peak. Could Monolith Soft ever return to form, I wondered. I guess 29th of October, a random Tuesday, was the moment I was waiting 10 years of my life for. The game I locked in, the deepest recesses of my psyche as a 14 year old, was finally being unearthed with a new story content as a cherry on top. I don't know the details, but everyone was saying how the game ended on a cliffhanger, so Takahashi-san won't just give us a satisfying narrative conclusion this time around, but will also probably integrate X into either Xenosaga or Blade games, whether directly or indirectly with a parallel universe angle. But I guess that's the small fry, since the weight is already 100% worth it for me, after seeing how beautiful Alma looks in this comparison. Her blue eyes, new beautiful nose, thicker cheeks. The way she looks at the camera, the better contrast with the colors. This is not just some lazy port looking at you, Naughty Dog. To be honest, she looks kind of odd in the original version, but now she gives me A vibes in Future Redeemed, whom I already loved as a character. And please check out how much detail and textures can be added as Switch has 2 gigs of extra RAM compared to 1 gigs on the Wii U. Look at the draw distance and how much more stuff can be added or crammed into this already beautiful game. See, as by nature, handhelds draw lower wattages to balance the battery life, which is why we aren't seeing 4K 60fps right now. The CPU here needs more juice to push those frames. And I'm gonna be honest here, a Switch 2 exclusive port would give us a 60fps with higher resolution. But according to Nintendo's marketing strategy, we're probably not gonna see Switch 2 until late 2025, since if it were to release earlier, Xenoblade X would be marketed at least as a day one cross-gen title instead. Meaning this cross-gen port would mean upwards of six months of waiting for the console to release. And as someone who has been waiting for this moment for 10 years already, I will just take the 1080p and 30fps, and looks like there is no dynamic resolution scaling here as well. Xenoblade Chronicles X is a completely new game for me, and I've never played it. I'm here for the handheld experience and new story content, and I know that Monolith Soft needs the money since this was an expensive port. Takahashi-san himself said it, how the money from the original Switch owners will probably go directly into funding their new research and development team along with Xenoblade 4 coming out for Switch 2. And here is the key thing I want. The level down option, which they already integrated for Xenoblade 1 Definitive Edition, allowing me to manually adjust the difficulty anytime. And I want that unlocked 
immediately in X. It is no secret that I like hard games, and for the first game, reducing my levels often enabled me to enjoy the bosses to such a degree that I can't do without them anymore. Xenoblade 1 actually has a fantastic combat system. It's just that many people, myself included, couldn't experience all the subtleties due to how easy it was to be overpowered or overleveled in this game. Takahashi-san better keeps the tradition going and don't make this an NG Plus feature as this is a gameplay-driven game unlike the number trilogy. When it comes to Xenoblade X, story will apparently take a back seat. When you explore this vast world, you will see those unique monsters on the horizon sprinkled throughout the map, and as a fruit of your exploration, that should be a reward by itself. And I certainly don't want that reward, that enemy, to be a pushover, because unlike some people, I actually love Xenoblade combat on harder difficulties. It just blends enough strategical depth with a tinge of randomness to hook me in. And after speaking to a few of my friends on Discord who told me X has one of the best combat and exploration of the entire franchise, well, color me intrigued. Sure, I don't necessarily expect a comparable density to Future Redeem's map, as in that game, every 5 minutes you walk, you're greeted with an accessory unlock kit, which immediately adds complexity to the gameplay and combat. I know that X's big map can't accommodate such density, but again, my personal problem with Allrest and Ionios was the sense of scale, not the rewards of exploration. Bionis was the only one that was able to give me that open world illusion, but I don't want illusions, I want an actual open world ever since Bionis, which is funny because X actually looks more technologically advanced and impressive than its Switch Brothers. Maybe not in terms of characters and the hair textures, but definitely the draw distance, design and detail of the world. It is commendable what Monolith Soft could do on the Wii U hardware, punching far above its weight, almost rivaling PlayStation 4 JRPGs in the modern era, to be honest. And the story that many people criticize to be lightweight in X might surprise all of us actually with this story content at the end. Who knows, maybe we're looking at something on the quality of Torna rather than Future Connected. Finally, I just want to say that I'm a sci-fi fan, which is evident by how much I gush over Xenosaga games. I've recently finished watching the first season of Three Body Problem two days ago, which blew me away to such a degree that I will read the trilogy books in preparation for March 20th with Xenoblade X. Since I always like to engross myself in similar medias like movies, books and TV shows thematically aligning with my anticipated games. So although I probably won't release a blind let's play of Xenoblade X on the channel, I will share my first impressions immediately and a review along with in-depth lore videos on the new story content. I say this because we will also be going over Xenosaga lore in the upcoming months, so if you're intrigued about the ending of Future Redeemed and how it ties to Cosmos exactly, subscribe, give this video a like and watch my Metaphysics of Ionios episode right here. One thing I can guarantee is that you won't be disappointed. That's it for me today, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.